My guest today is a lady who has a cabinet full of trophies given to her for excellence in journalism. She's an author and also as a young girl, she had a predilection for Che Guevara. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still wear the Che Guevara t-shirts? No, David, I don't. I've still got a poster of his in my house. Um, and not that I believe in socialism or anything, but I do love the vision they had of a society that works for all of its people. Hasn't quite worked out that way, but I still have a dream um, of that kind of world. Do you think it can ever work? I mean, we're working oh. towards that here. Sure, I see it working in Scandinavia. I think the Scandinavian countries work for many of their people. I've got some family in Sweden. And when you see the public schools, public hospitals, really a thing to strive toward. I think we've tried very hard in South Africa to create a working social democracy. But we now reach a point where we're running out of money very fast. And how are we going to keep people in a state of basic well-being um, without the required uh, fiscal measures? We don't want to talk politics sure. today because this is about you. Sure. This is why journalism. You came from Bosman, you chose to go to varsity and you chose journalism. Why not medicine? Why not uh, law? Mm. Why journalism? As, as, um, I, as I guess all my um, elders at the time wanted their kids to be accountants or doctors or lawyers, exactly. <laughs> um, because that was your way out. Um, but for me, looking at people like Anton Harbour at the time, looking at Don Matera, looking at Joe Tlolwe, I saw journalism as a way of changing our country. Um, and that's why I chose it and I guess why I still continue to practice it because I do see it as a means of making our country better. Even though you're an editor, you're an excellent journalist. You write beautifully. I mean the book that we're going to try and advertise and that's not the point of the that's not the point of the interview. I mean when I read your words you have a wonderful way of expressing yourself. Your thoughts are clear. Thank you. How did this develop? Was it natural or did you work on this? No, I guess I'm a bit of an introvert. So I always found a great um, a company in words, in reading, um, and it probably came from that. I'm lucky that my parents ins ensured there was always a newspaper in the house or a magazine. Um, I had brothers who read copiously, and in our family I think they really are the wordsmiths. They're the people who string things together um, beautifully. And then I guess through reading comes an ability to write, and I'm very uh, grateful for that ability. It's also been really good to go and work at very different places. So at the financial main, you learn the, um, how to write in a quite a clipped, uh, concise form, and all of that feeds into what you do. You're best known, let's put it this way, for the role you played at the Mail of God. Sure. sure. Um, you built your name around that. You took on major issues. You were very, very brave and you recognized for that. Then you made the move to City Press. Right. Why the move? Why the move? Um, I always, I mean, I'm still always have been uh, a little bit in love with the Mail and Guardian. I know it from when it was the Weekly Mail. I worked there before it was bought partly by the Guardian of London to protect it. Um, I loved its spirit, I loved its buccaneering spirit, I loved the idea of being contrarian um, and so I've always gone back there. But at some point I felt like you cannot only keep writing for an elite in society um, and I liked the history of City Press which had been the Golden City Post uh, owned by Jim Bailey um, and, and staffed by many wonderful people I look up to in journalism. So, um, running that has been a lot of fun for me. Again, learning a very, very different kind of journalism um, for the mass how, market. How, how do you explain that? I mean, how do you explain uh, mass journalism? Mm. You know, from from from. Uh, well, I've, I've learned so much from the CEO of Media Twenty Four, Ismere Vedeman. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk to her. Um, she ran you heisgenoot and drum and for me those are the three magazines that really have the finger on the pulse of what ordinary South Africans are talking about and thinking about um, and that for me is how I understand the difference so 
we can deal in the realm of the brain and the mind and ration, but to understand emotionally what's making the country tick, what people are thinking about, what ordinary people are concerned about, has really been an enormous honour at City Press. Do you try influence that, or do you just report on it? No, you, you know, have because to. at the Mail and yes. Guardian, you were investigative. Yes. I mean, you took on major issues. What's what's the role? Because it's a big newspaper. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very, very very large influential paper. one. Mm. Um, it's I guess with editing, you have to know when to lead and you've got to know when to follow. So when are you reflecting what your readers uh, want and desire, and when are you telling them about something new? So uncovering in Kandla and the misspending mm. there at City Press that was huge for us. It was quite a gamble because our readers are very intrinsically ANC people. They don't like it when you get too in the face, when you box too much. So telling them about that was a real journey for me. And you keep yes. boxing? We keep, you keep boxing. Huh? And, and but you also have to, what I've loved beginning to understand is how ordinary South Africans are very, very concerned about the public rand because they understand the ability of that rand to make a difference in their lives. And can you influence that? I mean, you do try and influence Yes. That. I mean, sometimes people would get pretty angry with you, but City mm. Press is uh, now an investigative uh, title. I like to think um, up there with the Mail and Guardian and with the Sunday Times, doing work which I believe is important for people to hear. Mm. I was going to ask, yes. do you ever have any comeback? Do you All ever time. get that phone call from... Uh, yeah. uh, from Pretoria or from Cape Town? Uh, oh, we get calls all the time, um, very angry calls, far more than I got at the Mail and Guardian. And I think that's because people realize the reach and the positioning of City Press is quite an influential one. So, so that's a fair constant in my life. Is it nerve-wracking? To have angry people on No, the but I'm saying is it nerve-wracking? Does it sometimes... <laughs> yeah. Huh? At first it used to be deeply nerve-wracking <laughs> because um, I'm a Piscean and I, I like to be popular, I like people to <laughs> yeah. like me. Mm. So I chose the completely uh, wrong job for that. But you learn how to listen to people's concerns, see if there's um, credibility in it and then offer them the space to share their positions. And do you still write editorials? Are you still involved? Yes, I, I write a lot less than I used to, which is why I really wanted to write the book because it was <laughs> burning at my soul and I wanted an ability to think a little bit longer. Because uh, in the era of Twitter, you just you find yourself truncating your thoughts and ideas. So that was my effort and I, I, I've got another one bubbling in another my book. brain. Eh? Yes, <laughs> yes, because I love writing. Right? <laughs> Going back to your childhood. Yes. I mean, it's, it's a wonderful story that you were brought up in Bosman yes. and have come this full path to where you are highly respected in all circles today. Thank you. What was it like growing up in the 70s, 80s? It was, you know, when I look back upon it now, is um, it's quite hard for me to do that because obviously there were lots of special people. Your yeah, teachers that, did your best. Mm -hmm. Your parents did their best. So to come out and say actually it was rather awful and it felt often like a prison to me is you have to be so careful to not hurt people who tried their level best in very difficult circumstances to push young people out of it and into a better life. Do you have time for anything other than writing now? Oh, absolutely. I make time. <laughs> so um, I'm doing a yoga at the moment. I'm trying to perfect that craft because I really think it... Um, it's very good for your mind um, and for your and for your body. Um, I love dancing whenever I can. What and then, of, um, I was going to ask you because yes. I've just interviewed Mark Pilgrim. Yes, you yes. might know Mark, and uh, he's a DJ. Yes, of course. And uh, it's funny that all the people I meet, I always think, you know, because I'm quite old. I'm a man of the '60s, but everybody seems to be an era later than that. <laughs> so, so when you say you dance, yes. what do you dance so to? So, if you know uh, that great meeting place of South African business, the Butcher's Grill, in yeah. Uh, yeah. Next door, there's a place called Katsy's, which just Katsy's, plays so. wonderful R&B and hip hop and Dr. Victor and stuff that. Because I'm getting pretty old now, so it's '80s or '90s music. Um, it's quite lovely. And then Johannesburg is just for me the most wonderful cultural city there's every week there's a new 
place or neighborhood that's uh, lovely. There is something fascinating about Joburg. There is something mm. that, that really draws you in. And each time you go and visit somewhere else, you, you want to come back. I yes. couldn't see myself living anywhere, anywhere else. else. Yeah, um, it's probably got that buccaneering spirit of, mm. of its founding times. And I'm a Witsy like you. Okay. you know, I used to play soccer for Wits. Went to watch them in Cape Town play Kaiser Chiefs. And That's that. excellent. Were, were you a radical at Varsity? You know, my experience of Wits wasn't great. So I'm, um, I mean, I'm among the alumni they use in, in campaigns and I, I'm grateful for that. But being there when I was in the mid 80s, really I could perfectly understand the Fees Must Fall movement because I found it a very um, alienating um, place where I really grappled to get to the heart of how to learn in a very different way. So it's my hope that one day I'll go back there and do a master's uh, to have a different and better experience um, of it because I have an ambivalent relationship with the university. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because the mid 80s was a tumultuous time yes. in South Africa. It was a time where where people weren't quite sure what yes. was going and to... And we couldn't just stay in lecture theatres and continue as normal when the whole country was burning. So I guess with many of my peers, we spent far more time protesting on campus than we did um, being in class. Yeah. We're going to have to wrap up, but Thank I want to know what the next book is about. Sure, I'll tell you. <laughs> so it's got a working title called Looting. Looting? Yes, and I want to look at when we, when we entered what for me is a real spiral downward of corruption and cronyism. And obviously as a journalist I get lots of information that I'm not able to use a lot of it. Can't tell it in a form that makes people understand it better. You have to tell it in a way that's, that's a headline that tells a big splash story. So I want to seek to understand where we entered this and then to look at whether it's possible uh, for a country, are there countries which have turned the tide on corruption? So that's what the next one will be I about. Think, mm -hmm. I think you're hitting the source of uh, what is perhaps our, our major worry. Yes. You know, create an environment where there's no corruption, yes. create an environment that's safe, you know, create an environment where people, where kids can ride their, bi their, their, their bikes in the street. You don't need a master plan. No. People want to live there and they will then become creative. Hmm. So I, 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 that's what I'm planning next. Thank you. Feriel, it's been lovely having you here. Thank you. I urge everyone to read your Thank book. Thank you very much. It's beautifully written Thank you so and there's much. a lot of information there. And my name's mentioned. <laughs> that it is. <laughs> but uh, you've been on the cast with uh, Ferial Hafferji and me, David Shapiro.